In this tutorial, we're going to have a look at the Ken Burns effect. I'm going to share a few tips and tricks for setting up a slideshow, which is essentially what the, the Ken Burns effect is used for. You can use it to zoom in and out of video, but most of the time, if I'm using it, it's for a presentation style display where you're moving through a series of slides. So we've got some nice full colors here in Regina in Saskatchewan. So I'm gonna use these images for the Ken Burns slideshow that we're gonna do here. So we've just got a few images to, to move through as we kind of demo this effect. So the first thing we need is a few images down to the timeline. So I'm just gonna grab a few of these. Okay, so we've got a few images down on the timeline. Now, at the moment, each of these images is just one second long. So that's my first tip for working with the Ken Burns effect is that when we have a series of images, if we drag across all of our slides and hold down control and tap D on the keyboard, it allows us in the center here to set the duration. So what we've got here is hours, minutes, seconds, and frames. So if we want each slide to be, for instance, five seconds, we can type in five and then a period and it will make it five seconds long. So because I've got all of these selected, when I hit enter, it's gonna change the duration of each of those to five seconds. So let's just do another shortcut. So if I hold down shift and tap Z, it's gonna zoom me to the timeline. So it's gonna make all the clips on the timeline fill that space. So to add the basic Ken Burns effect, we select an image, okay? And then we've got some options here for transforming, cropping, and distorting. Um, I just flipped a crop a second ago, so that's why mine was up here now. And then once we've selected the crop tool, this is where we access the Ken Burns tool. We've got options for trimming, for cropping, and for adding the Ken Burns effect. So if I click here, you can see we get this red rectangle and this green rectangle around. We get this red rectangle and this green rectangle. So essentially the green rectangle is the start of where the animation is gonna be. So if I just click done up here for the moment. We can go back into that in a second. You'll see that when we start this, we're on the green rectangle, we're zoomed in. And then as we move through, we zoom out. So essentially that red rectangle and that green rectangle allow us to frame the shot. The Ken Burns effect will run for the entire duration of the clip. So if we want to slow down this effect, then we can simply drag it out and that will slow down the effect. So let's have a look at some of the other changes we can make here. So I'm just going to highlight this clip and change it back to five seconds so it's the same duration as the other clips so once we've got this selected if we click back on the crop tool we'll jump back into the selected crop so here if we go from the top here we can reverse the effect so essentially we're flipping the green start to the outside so instead of zooming out we're going to be zooming in um, we've got a play into out so we're just going to preview that ken burns effect and see what's gonna happen when we when we view that. And it's just gonna keep kind of looping through that. I'm gonna hit the space bar and that's gonna stop that for me. And then at the top right, we've got the done option here, which allows us to finish in this editing mode. Now in the middle here with the green and red squares, we can also manipulate the framing of our shots manually as well. So if I click in the middle, you can see the red frame is highlighted here. I can move that end point around so I can reframe the shot exactly as I want it to be framed. Okay. And the same for the green. So if I come to the green shot, I can click on these corners at the edge of my frame and resize those. So I can change whether it's a zoom in or a pan up in this case, or a pan down. So we've got some different options for setting the beginning and end of that Ken Burns effect. So if I click done here, okay, in this animation now, we're gonna press play. So we're basically moving up uh, through the tree here. And for the next clip here, if I'm gonna toggle on the Ken Burns effect, so I'm gonna click on this clip, comes to the Ken Burns effect, and we are moving up through the previous clip. So I'm gonna change this so we move in a different direction. So I have the start up at the top and move this down. And you can see when I'm moving this down, I can actually grab some of this dark area outside of my clip, which basically means that I would end up with a black section at the edge of my clip. So you wanna make sure that you're within that. And if you come to the middle here, you'll see that you snap in. So I can make sure that I'm not grabbing any of the edge of that clip. So 
I can flip between the start and the end to move them around and manipulate them freely. And I can flip it if I want to and then click done. Okay. Now often when I'm working on a slideshow, I have a lot of different slides that I'm going to be adding those effects to. And what I'll do at the outset is I will use the copy and paste attribute so that I can set up a basic Ken Burns effect for my clips and then copy and paste that to a large number of the clips. So I'm just going to zoom out of my timeline here and show you what I mean. So if I add a couple of extra clips down to the timeline, I think we've got the same clip here twice. So I'm just going to, or a similar one. So I'm just going to delete that. So I'll just drop in a couple of other images in here. Okay. And I'll grab those control and D to set them to five seconds. So I've set this first and second clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this first clip and do command and C to copy it or edit and copy. And then I'm going to select the alternating clips here by holding down the command key. So I can click on one clip, hold down command, click on the second and third clip. And now I'm going to go to edit and paste attributes. And I'm going to paste the crop, which is what Ken Burns is a part of. So I'm going to paste this crop in. And what we'll see now is that each of these clips here has a crop added to it. Okay. Now it's not worked for some of those portrait shots. So we'll definitely have to rework that by coming back in. So let's see if it works a bit better here. So I'm going to click on this clip and go to edit and copy, and then I'll select the alternating clips here and go to edit and paste attributes paste the crop again, and you'll see that we now have the Ken Burns effect added in here. Now you can see that on some of these clips where the clip is the same orientation, the transition is working well. So here and here, so that copy and paste attributes, but for this second to last and final clip, we need to highlight that and go in here and Actually, there's a, a strange thing that's that's happened here with the aspect ratio of the Ken Burns here. So I'm going to go up to my inspector here. And if you don't see the inspector, you can go to window show inspector. Okay. And this is where we access some of the more advanced properties for the clips that we're working on. So I'm just going to come to my crop options here where you can see Ken Burns is turned on and just use the reset button, this little hooked arrow to reset that. Okay. And now I'm going to come down here again add my Ken Burns on again. And now we get the standard widescreen Ken Burns effects that we can use here. So because we were copying and pasting from a clip of one aspect ratio, so a landscape aspect ratio to a portrait aspect ratio, we had a strange thing happening. So I'm just going to leave this at the default for the moment. And then we'll come and find the other clip that wasn't working. So here again, we can reset that crop come back and add it in, go to Ken Burns, and I'll just flip this round so we get a slightly different movement. So we're starting at the bottom of the tree and moving up to the top. And we'll have a little zoom in there as we do that. Press done. So now you can see we're able to move through these different clips as a slideshow. And the nice thing about the way this is set up here is that if we feel like the slideshow is moving a bit too Oh, we've got another one here, which we need to reset. Let's just fix that. So I'm just taking it off and adding it again, pressing done, and then we'll move through it. So as I was saying, if we want to speed this up, we can grab all of these clips, hold down control and tap D, and then we could type in three period or full stop, and then hit enter and that will speed up that animation. So now you can see those Ken Burns transitions, the beginning and the end have stayed the same, but actually now we're moving through this slideshow a little more quickly. Okay. So the next step that I'm going to do is to add some transitions to this. So I'm going to use a basic cross dissolve, which is my default transition. So what I can do here is highlight all of these clips hold down the command key and tap T and that will add the default transition. Now I want to take it off the first clip here at the beginning and at the end. 
don't want the transition there. And basically now you can see that we get a transition across dissolve between each of these images. Okay. So you get this nice move between those images. And obviously to work on those moves, you would just keep working on the framing of the Ken Burns effect to kind of make sure they were happening smoothly. Now, just like with Eclipse, we can highlight all of our transitions here by holding down the command key and clicking on them, and then use Control and D to type in a new duration. So we can make a two second transition for each of these, which is gonna change the way that this flows a little bit. Okay. Now selecting and then holding down the command key to add or remove from your selection is one way of making these selections, but we can also use the timeline index as well to search for different things. So you can see I've turned on the timeline index at the very bottom left of my screen here, and I can see all my clips. So I can see each individual clip, and as I click through, it will highlight, um, and the cross dissolves would highlight as well. So if I type in C-R-O-S, S here, then you can see I can actually highlight all of my cross dissolves in here. And if I come to the timeline now, you can see they're highlighted yellow. I can hold down control and tap D. And now I can type in 1.15, one period 1.5, and change the duration of those transitions all in one go. And I can do the same for the, the clips as well. So if I remove this search, okay, now with the clips, it's slightly different because it really depends on the, the naming of those clips, but each of my clips is taken in on the same day. So 2016, 09, 27. So if I type in 2016, then I can click on my first clip, hold down shift and click on my last clip. And now when I come here, they're all highlighted. I could hold down control and tap D again and change the duration of all those clips. Now, this may not seem super useful with only five or six clips on the timeline as we have here. But if you have 50 or 100 clips, as you can do in some of these uh, bigger presentation slideshows, then it becomes really incredibly useful to be able to use that timeline index to make those changes. So to recap briefly, I'm just gonna close the timeline index here. Okay, so essentially here we are highlighting a clip. We are adding in that Ken Burns transition. So the beginning and end, we can flip those around we can change the framing of those so we can frame things out of shot or into shot and then we can change the speed of the clips on the timeline by changing the duration of those clips you can see now that my timeline is rendering out here so when you see this orange line it means that your your timeline is rendering and that's because i've come away from the timeline my automatic rendering has, has started so as soon as i start to play through again now that will pause so there's one other thing when I'm working with the Ken Burns effect, and I'll just come out of here, that I do do when I'm working with longer slideshows is that I'll use a compound clip to contain them. And it means you can change the speed of the entire slideshow all in one go. So if I highlight my entire timeline here, go to file, new and compound clip. Okay, I'll just leave it at the default. You can see now that I have that whole Ken Burns slideshow in one clip. It means that if I want to speed it up, I can go across here to the retime options. I can slow down or speed up my clip so I can speed it up. So I get a super fast Ken Burns effect, which is making me feel a little dizzy. Um, and it also means that if I'm wanting to grab this and take it to another edit, so if I hold down Command and tap C, that's copied that entire compound clip. I'll go back to another project that I'm currently working on and I'll just drop this in here somewhere towards the end. So at this point, I wanna paste this in as a connected clip. So the shortcut for that is holding down the Alt key and tapping V and I'm gonna get this message because I'm editing a compound clip between two different libraries. Okay, so if I click OK, you can see now it's still gonna work. Final Cut Pro is just doing a little sanity check for me to make sure I'm, I'm doing something I wanna do. So you can see now I've got that slideshow on a connected clip. I can crop it, I can extend it out so it's taking in the whole slideshow and I can also move it around. So I can treat this basically like a, a regular video clip. If I wanna edit that compound clip and change my transitions or change the duration of my original clips, then I can double click here and it will take me into that compound clip where I can edit it. And it's definitely worth finding out a bit more about compound clips. They're useful 
when you're working on more complicated edits um, to kind of section things off and keep things organized. So that's a overview of how I work with Ken Burns effects. And a lot of the time I'm using these for corporate presentations and business videos that are being shown on YouTube. A lot of people have some great photography. They don't always have video content to, to kind of broadcast. So you often end up with some, some great quality images that the Ken Burns effect just allows you to bring to life a little bit and also very quickly and efficiently for these types of slideshows. So I hope that's been useful and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.